Yo, what is good people? Ben from Lover of Tech and we are back with another camera comparison. This is actually a first on the channel. We're doing it freeway and this is going to be between the Galaxy S22 Ultra, the Oppo Find X5 Pro and the iPhone 13 Pro. Hopefully this goes all right. This is the first time I'm doing it three-way and um, we are pretty much going to be testing everything as we do as much as possible. Daylight, low light, rear cameras and selfie cameras and we are starting with the front facing cameras and the s22 ultra and the iphone 13 pro do go up to 4k 60 frames a second whereas the oppo is limited to 1080p 30 frames a second i'm going to do a quick breakdown of the camera specs then i'm going to come back in to the daylight video let's do a quick breakdown of the hardware specs on all three devices and with the s22 ultra is a quad rear system on the rear the main sensor is 108 megapixels both zooms are 10 megapixels at 3x and 10x optical zoom then the ultra wide is 12 megapixels and then the selfie is 40 megapixels the oppo find x5 pro is using a triple rear camera system the main sensor is 50 megapixels the ultra wide is 50 megapixels as well and the 2x zoom is 13 megapixels and the selfie is 32 megapixels and with the iphone much simpler and straightforward all three cameras on the rear are 12 megapixels that is the 3x zoom the main and the ultra wide and also the selfie is 12 megapixels as well full description of all the specs will be in the description below so definitely have a read let's not waste much time here and let's get back into the main camera comparison all right we'll start on the front facing camera 4k 60 frames a second on both the iphone and the samsung 1080p 30 and again just testing the image quality stabilization and the dynamic range now that we've got a bit of sun out quick test with a small little run now we'll switch to 4k 30 frames a second on the samsung and the iphone still 1080p on the oppo as it's limited Quick test of the run. Now we are down to 1080p 30 frames a second on all the cameras to make it pair, make it pair, make it fair for the Oppo. I'm gonna see the image quality, dynamic range, stabilization. Quick run. This mode here is the cinematic video on the iPhone as well as the video portrait mode on the Samsung. You don't have that feature on the Oppo Find X5 Pro. Whether this matters to you or not, just consider it and um, see what the image quality is like, I guess. So we've moved to the rear camera, 4K 30 frames a second. I'm just seeing how the image quality and the stabilization, especially the dynamic range. Now that we have a bit of sun that's out. Quick run. All right, let's go to the ultra wide. The ultra wide and the ultra wide which is great to see that you can switch between the lenses while in 4K 30 frames a second. Now we're in the ultra wide on all three. And quick run. Back to the main, back to the main. Definitely do not like the interface on the Oppo and how to get back to the main. Zoom. Yeah, definitely do not like the interface on the Oppo. 3X. Let's 
see the image quality there. And then one advantage you do have with the Samsung is that you can go 10x if needed. I'm gonna stay still. And oh no, it's yeah. The interface on the Oppo for zooming is not the one. It's not good at all. And times line for an iPhone. Okay. Let's leave it there. Bring it back. Yeah, that's Oppo. Not the one. Alright. Still continuing going to do this on one long stretch because this is one advantage that you get with the Samsung that you don't get with the others. In 4K30 you can switch not only to all the camera lenses in the rear but you are in the selfie camera as well. You don't have to stop recording. You don't have to stop recording which is great to see. I love that about Samsung. Continuous recording between all the lenses switching on the fly in 4K 30 frames a second. No pause needed. Now those limitations are slightly different in 4K60 because you can only flip to the main camera in 4K60, which we'll demonstrate later. But yeah, there we go. So we're in the 4K UHD 60 frames a second and just a quick run and test. Three. Here's where the limitations come in 4K 60 frames a second and it's like this on most smartphones. On the iPhone for some reason you still see the 5X, uh, the 0.5 and the 3X but it's, it's just the main camera. This is the main sensor. You can't flip to the front facing and it's no different to the Oppo as well. That is just all the main camera up to 10X being zoomed in, right? So this is all digital zoom. And it's no different to Samsung as well, where you can go 10x digital zoom, right? This is all on the main. The only thing you can do on a Samsung that is a good look is the fact that, as stated, you can flip to the selfie camera at least and continue recording without having to stop and switch lenses. So that's all right. But I seriously don't understand why modern day smartphones, when it gets up to 4K UHD 60 frames a second, there's just this weird limitation and how you can switch between the lenses on the fly. Just wish it was fixed. No such issue in 4K frames a second. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Quickly showing 4K UHD 60 frames a second on all three cameras, now with the ultra wide. Quick look at 8K 24 frames a second on the Samsung versus 4K 30 on the other two devices and this is a very niche recording mode because there's one, a heavy crop, two is only limited to 24 frames a second, there's no image stabilization, yeah, just a quick look. So this is the rear camera for 4K UHD 30 frames a second on all. Just want to see how the image quality is on myself. I usually don't do this, but you know, let's see how it looks. Arms extended out, hopefully the frame is all right. And um, yeah, quick one. And a quick focusing test on the S22 Ultra. Smooth. No smooth. And a quick focusing test on the Find X5 Pro. Slightly. No issues. 
sir. All right, quick focus and test using the S22 Plus as a subject on the iPhone 13 Pro. Now we are in low light in 4K UHD 30 frames a second on the rear camera on all three. To my eyes, the Oppo Find X5 Pro seems to be doing the best. Let's go ultra wide. I got ultra wide and ultra wide. This is the nighttime video, 4K 30 frames a second on the Samsung and iPhone, and again, limited to 1080p 30 on the Opera. A quick word from channel affiliate partner NordVPN. As my preferred VPN of choice, NordVPN gives you a secure connection while keeping a fast connection and also access to content in different regions on popular services like Netflix. Use my unique link for your NordVPN plan and my coupon code Lover of Tech backed with a risk free 30 day money back guarantee. Now, let's start with the daylight photos from all these three cameras. Firstly, for the ultra wide and the main wide sensor, the S22 Ultra and the Oppo Find X5 Pro look nearly the same in terms of the colors and details, while the iPhone has a slightly lighter look but still has great detail. Things take a massive turn when it comes to zoom as the S22 Ultra at 3x and 10x is much clearer in detail and sharpness compared to the 2x zoom on the Oppo and the 3x zoom on the iPhone. Taking a look at the flower shop without macro mode, all three do a great job and basically capture at the same distance with very similar depth of field. If I was to pick one, I would say the Oppo does look the nicest. When switching to the macro mode on all three phones, the iPhone is really impressive and gets really close, followed by the Oppo and then Samsung. Things change slightly with the ultra wide and main wide sensors in these daylight shots with the Oppo showing a brighter image with better shadow detail compared to the iPhone and especially the S22 Ultra. Where the Samsung asserts its dominance is in zoom quality. Even up to 30x zoom, the clarity in the signs in daylight is amazing and semi-decent when pushing it even all the way up to 100x, which Oppo is limited to 20x digital and the iPhone at 15x digital. For the daylight selfie, it's a no contest and personally, Samsung takes the win by a good margin with excellent dynamic range, great detail and sharpness with spot on accurate colors. The iPhone comes a close second but lacks a bit of dynamic range and skin colors could be a little bit better. Oppo sadly misses the mark for me when it comes to the selfie quality and it's something that you're going to see consistently going forward. This all translates to portrait mode as well on the selfie and all three have great edge detection and bokeh blur here. <music> Lastly, for the daylight shots with the rear cameras on me, I much prefer what I'm seeing here from Samsung on the ultra wide and the main wide sensor with great balance when it comes to exposure, nice clean colors, good dynamic range, 
backed with nice detail and sharpness. Close second is the iPhone, which does great with what it has. And you could pretty much say that it has more of a natural look, but lacks just a little bit of shadow detail that I would like to see a bit more. What the Oppo Find X5 Pro has in good shadow detail, it falls apart with a very washed out image that looks muddy, lacks contrast, and also has a very odd blue tinge on it as well. All of this also translates to the same look on portrait mode for the pictures, but I have to say that the iPhone did do the best with portrait mode for both the wide and the zoomed in images here. Switching to nighttime landscape shots and all three do a great job. It's very hard to call this one here with the main sensors, but to my eye, the iPhone has a great balance of handling the lamp with minimal to no flare while keeping a good color balance, good detail sharpness, and good nighttime exposure. This is then followed by Oppo in second place, even though the color balance is slightly different. Samsung looks good, but the flaring and the purple color shift on the lamp throws off just a little bit. The last set of landscape images are in extreme low light where I could barely see what was in front of me. With the ultra wide in this situation, the Oppo is the best followed by the iPhone and then Samsung. The results to my eye are pretty much the same when switching to the main wide sensor as well. When you activate night mode on the ultra wide, the iPhone and the Samsung are neck and neck with a more warmer look on the iPhone. Night mode on the main wide sensor is basically nearly on the same level on all three, but I would say the Oppo edges it out slightly to be the best one. Let's move over to low light selfies in this extreme situation. The Oppo is the most visible and the best one, followed by the iPhone and sadly Samsung is just way off the mark and not visible at all. But things switch up when night mode is used with the Samsung being the best showing that night mode makes a huge difference for the selfie followed by the iPhone and sadly the Find X5 Pro not really holding up well with night mode here. This follows the same order when it comes to using the front screen flash with Samsung doing the best job followed by the iPhone and then Oppo. For the last remaining rear night shots with the camera on me, starting with the ultra wide, the Oppo Find X5 Pro is leagues ahead of the other two, with both the Samsung and the iPhone not being visible or usable. Second place is Samsung, with the iPhone being in third place with the ultra wide. Samsung and Apple fare better moving to the main wide sensor, but the Oppo is still doing the best job in this situation by a decent amount, and this is without night mode. Now with night mode on both the ultra wide and the main sensor, it makes a massive difference on the Samsung and iPhone this time around, and it's definitely recommended to use night mode in these situations for the best low light result. Oppo is still doing a solid job here. Only downside with Oppo is that you get no night mode in portrait mode compared to the iPhone and Samsung, which allows you to use the portrait mode in low light. Summarizing the daylight selfie video, I have to say this is strictly between Samsung and iPhone. Both can shoot up to 4K UHD 60 frames a second on the selfie with good stabilization on the video. And also you do have a video portrait shooting mode as well. In 2022, at a starting price of £1,049 in the UK, for the Oppo Find X5 Pro to be limited to just 1080p 30 frames a second is not good at all in my opinion and lacks good stabilization and no special shooting features like video portrait mode. I know the popular opinion would be to say the iPhone is the best overall for video when it comes to the selfie, but I prefer Samsung because you lose no dynamic range when you're in 4K 60 frames a second, which is something that happens on the iPhone. It's a known characteristics and that only goes away when you actually shoot at 4K 30 frames a second. Let's look at the daylight rear video performance again. When it comes to video for the rear cameras, it's definitely still between the Samsung and the iPhone with Oppo. Although doing a better job since you now have access to 4K 60 frames a second video on the main wide sensor and the ultra wide, the quality and the usability is still a long way off from what you get from the iPhone and Samsung. How Oppo have implemented the UI for zooming and switching lenses make it very difficult to switch smoothly and quickly to get the shots you need. Now, this is a tough one between the Samsung and iPhone. But here is the final verdict. The iPhone is more consistent across all three lenses when recording video with smoother lenses when switching and a wider field of view for the ultra wide while still maintaining great video stabilization. 
but Samsung gives you more control with things like being able to switch from the rear cameras to the selfie and back without stopping the recording and more features like 8K 24 frames a second and generally better video stabilization as well when you're using the video portrait shooting mode. For the nighttime video on a rear ultra wide and a main sensor, this is where the Oppo shines and does produce some of the best low light video I've seen on a smartphone so far. All three pretty much struggle in low light for the selfie video so only use it in this situation if you really need to. Now that is it with this three-way ultimate camera comparison. First time it's been done on the channel. Let me know in the comment section below if you liked it. Give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos like this on our channel. I hope you're all safe during this time. I will catch you in the next one. Peace. Remember, the time.